The Archimoto SRK. 70 miles of range, top speed of 85 miles per hour, and a base price of under $12,000 before any IRS tax credit. It's very stable to drive, and with the roof seats, and seat belts it's a lot safer than a bike or scooter. Some states won't require a helmet or motorcycle license to drive an SRK, for the ones that do, you can use it to take the test. Side panels are in development, but even without them it's never particularly uncomfortable, according to Archimoto VP Jesse Fittipaldi. There's cargo space, along with room for a passenger, and Archimoto is also developing a delivery version. The dashboard is pretty intuitive, and there's a phone holder. The only control I couldn't come to grips with was cancelling the turn signal. This metallic green and high-vis yellow combination looks an awful lot like the Aston Martin racing colors, and that's a good thing in my book. Storage behind the driver's seat is this leather pouch. I wonder if they could spec one in ballistic nylon. Without a doubt, the most fun thing I've driven all year is also the cheapest. It's the Archimoto SRK, a three-wheeled electric vehicle that remains the one thing I liked about, say, 2016. Since then the Oregonian startup has been beavering away, refining the design of the $12,000 ever as it readies for production next year. The SRK made its way to DC recently, and that meant another chance to drive it, this time on some familiar city streets. Yet again, the experience blew me away. It's a tandem trike, with each front wheel powered by its own 25 kilowatts 34 horsepower electric motor. But don't let the handlebars fool you with seats, seat belts, and a roof, even the bike-phobic like me are quite at home here. In fact, earlier versions of Archimoto's platform actually used a steering wheel and pedals before evolving into the SRK, and it corners with almost no body roll. There's a 12 kWh lithium ion battery pack, good for about 70 miles, 112 km of range, although a 20 kWh pack will also be available. Depending on the state, you don't need a motorcycle license to drive it, but for those where that doesn't apply, you can take the test in the SRK. Since I drove it last, the SRK has a new polycarbonate windshield that the team is trying out. It also features the production gearbox. It's much quieter than before, there's a lot less latch, a lot less noise, and the gears are a lot better construction, explains Jesse Fittipaldi, Archimoto's VP. My first impressions were formed in a cold Las Vegas parking lot where traffic or passers be weren't much of a concern. Out in the real world, traffic I isn't an issue either. It's very nimble and more than quick enough, 060 mph in 7.5 seconds is plenty faster than a Nissan Leaf and almost as quick as a BMW i3. The Archimoto's top speed of 85 miles per hour 137 km per hour is more than enough. But it's still a slightly surreal experience driving it on city streets because the SRK is almost as attention-grabbing as a McLaren 570S. Pedestrians and other drivers frequently stop to ask questions, and the trike was a big hit with a high school crowd. The fact that it appeared to meet with so much acceptance from the general public gives me hope. The SRK reflects an affordable kind of electromobility for the coming years, and that's something we still see all too little of. I've seen the future and its electric drivers who would never consider a scooter like me for safety reasons could quite happily commute in an SRK, and the potential for using them as delivery vehicles is obvious. It also pick one over a smart car to go any day of the week. You also don't have to think very hard to see them being a big hit in places where people drive a lot of dirty two-strokes, tuk-tuks, or rickshaws. Archimoto has been in discussions about licensing the platform abroad, but right now its main focus is securing the investment needed to put the SRK into production here in the US next year. To do that, the company is using a law passed in 2012, the Jumpstart Our Business Startups Act, which allows small businesses to make use of crowdfunding to issue shares. The hope that Tesla was going to usher in a bold new era of electric vehicles is proving stubbornly slow to materialize. Five years on from the Model S introduction, the only major OEM with a long-range battery ever on the market is Chevrolet. While the Bolt is a fantastic car, it doesn't appear to be capturing the public imagination.
Other OEMs have models in the pipeline. Porsche and Audi are both very keen to try and undo some diesel-flavored bad karma. And Jaguar has the iPass electric SUV in store, but all those are still more than a year away. Volvo looks like it's catching electric fever, with plans for five new battery EVs in the works. Mazda and Toyota are joining forces to develop new EVs and both BMW and Mercedes-Benz have somewhat vague plans for new all-electric vehicles. None of those are on the road yet either. Meanwhile, Tesla has done more than just light a slow-burning fire under the traditional automakers. It has inspired plenty of new F startups, to the point where I think Sniff Petrol might need to create an F version of its rather funny boilerplate press release for new supercar makers. But for the good of a diverse ecosystem, it'd like it if some of these other F startups make a proper go of it. I'm not too worried about the F hypercars from outfits like Remac or NIO. Most of us will never encounter the hand built low volume vehicles they create. But an Archimoto would be in reach for a much bigger audience, even before the IRSF credit cuts its price by more than half. Listing image by Jonathan Gitlin